Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some and peace out to the rest of you. You already know who it is. It's the blackest man on YouTube, so black it's even in the name. So black you clicked on this video and your screen went dark. You know what I'm going to ask you to do and why I'm going to ask you to do it. That being said, I initially recorded this uh, yesterday and I was going to say that um, we all got played, meaning the men. Western men in general, but I only care about black men at this point and any other men of color who genuinely side with us and against the dominant society. That's pretty rare. That pretty much leaves black folk. Whatever nationality, Western black men are included in what I'm saying. And I was initially going to record uh, and talk about how um, the selected and the unselected men were at each other's throats at times arguing while uh, the beneficiary sat back and looked at both of us because the pimp pimps the hoes out to the tricks and the pickup artist pimps the men out to the women. And in either case, it's the men who foot the bill. And you could say from the women are the ones who have the babies, but now they have complete control. They have more control over uh, reproduction in their babies than men do over what they spend. So even in that regard, one has complete control over um, what she pays and the other has very little control over what he pays except in the very, uh, very initial phases. No, no other time does he have that. This says a lot right there. That tells us everything we need to know right there at that point. I was initially gonna record this about that. Now I was pissed because one of the things I noticed uh, yesterday was that when Amber Geiger got the verdict read out to her, a black lady deputy walked up and stroked her hair. And then I found out that the black female judge uh, was uh, endorsed by the Dallas Police Association. Today, I'm recording something even more militant than what I recorded yesterday. Not only am I here to say, Western black men, you've been played, we've been played. And one may have been played more than the other or been played in exchange for a lot less than the other. One may have been played more disrespectfully than the other. And having been both a selected and unselected man, I can honestly say that unselected men should be ticked off because they have not only been lied to, like most men, even selected men, but they have been lied to and disrespected when they were played. There was a certain amount of respect that women had for the selected men, but they played them too. And how so? Because they trained these men to view the non-selected men and I'm talking non-select in a dysfunctional context, as somehow weak and selling out because they chose to leave the context in which they were artificially marked as universally unselected. Artificially categorized is that. Artificially categorized as not only unselected in a cultural context, but told to believe that they were completely unselected, period, universally, by the entire gender, not by a demographic of the gender specific to a culture and a dysfunctional one at that. We screwed up. We let them play us. So either you wanted, you're part of the food of the plantation or you're one of the guards that gets to keep the other food on the plantation in exchange for some punani. And granted, punani is great under the right circumstances, but these circumstances have been ruined, and it's time for us to just go ahead and admit it. What we fail to realize, though, is how, um, how much neither of our lives matter to them in the long run. No one's life matters. I mean, the unselected guy's life matters less to the women, that is true. But to a certain extent, neither one's life matters to them as much as one of their own. Amber Geiger was supposed to get decades, at the least decades. And I would say she was supposed to be locked up all the way until she was old and infirm and needed that free health care, then released. That's what she was supposed to have happen because that's what's going on with these black liberation fighters if they get released at all. Like uh, 
I forgot his first name, but his last name is Africa. I think it's John Africa Sr., if I'm not mistaken. He was locked up away from his wife who gave birth to his son while she was in prison. Now, this is because of the life of one police officer when they lead siege in defense of white supremacy against those of us who are fighting against white supremacy. We were right, they were wrong, they did what they did. He had to serve 40 years and never live with his son or his wife. And he just got released to her and to his son who's 40 years old now at this point. Raised pretty much as an orphan by the struggle. But this cave bitch gets to walk into the wrong apartment. And if she did it by mistake, which takes a hell of a lot to avoid, if she, which takes a hell of a lot to do, you gotta really be dumb to do that. If she walked into that place by mistake and still shot him, my question is, if you that damn tired, how you got the reflexes to point your gun that quickly and aim and kill him and not miss? We know something's wrong. She ain't saying something, even if she's telling the truth about how accidental it was that she shot him. She may not have meant to actually. Look, she got convicted of actual murder. The jury did their part. But we're looking at a judge. We looked at a black woman deputy console him. We're looking at a black judge that hugged her and then gave her a too light of a sentence. And then we're looking at, we're even looking at Botham John's brother breaking down with that Christian stuff. I'm not supposed to mention it because as a Muslim, it sounds like I'm attacking Christians. No, no, I'm attacking white religion, period. I've already attacked uh, pro-white Muslims for this stuff. So don't think I'm gonna let you uh, pro-white Christians off the hook either. And if you're talking about forgiveness, when every white person commits a crime against a black person, you're preaching white Christianity and we don't have time for that. Forgiveness is what you do when you have the person tied up, ready to face punishment. And then you choose when you have the power to not forgive. We don't have the power to not forgive him, so it ain't forgiveness when we do it. So not only did he do something that was completely stupid, but two sisters sold us out. Yeah, just, just stroking her hair was selling us out. Because let's be honest, not only do we know that if Botham Jean had walked in accidentally to the wrong apartment, it, not, we know that not only had he not only if he had walked into his own apartment and she was there because she'd walked in accidentally previously, if he had walked into his own apartment after she had entered and he shot her thinking it was in self-defense, he would not have gotten no 10 years with the possibility of being out early on good behavior. We know that not, that would not have happened, but let's also call this what it is. If she had shot a black woman, them sisters would not have been quite as ready to console her. If they were, that would have been, I mean, it would be a surprise if they were, but we know they wouldn't have been quite as consoling because they would be more outraged if it had been a black woman she shot mistakenly. But because it was a black man that she shot mistakenly, it's not quite the same outrage. It ain't got to do with it being an accident, it's got to do with who got killed and by whom. It's okay, from saying, you can beat that old big nigga. It's okay, from saying, you whipped that big nigga because he was bad anyway. It's all right, Miss Ann. You just go ahead to sleep. I'll keep brushing your hair, baby. They didn't realize, but they should have realized it, especially the judge. That, that was not only some bedwinch business. That was bedwinch business without even a dingling in the, in the bed to share. I mean, that was just... I ain't going to front. We've been played, brothers. We, we, we've really been played, really. Because, and one of the ways I know we can, we've been played is because, see, Botham Jean, he ain't even Ados. He ain't gotta be Ados. I mean, not US Ados. He's island Ados, because if you count the islands as a part of the Americas, then yeah, he's an American descendant of slaves in that regard, but not a United States American descendant of slaves. He ain't gotta be. Somebody fed that religion to his ancestors. And before you come and start telling me about the Arabs feeding the religion of Islam to my ancestors, fuck the shuck up. They didn't do it. The Mandinka, the Wolof, the Soninke, these folks, they didn't get it from the Arabs. They may have heard about it from them, but they didn't start and, and spread it themselves like that. That's not the way that worked. 
We have superseded them century after century as far as Islam goes, to be honest with you. We have out-Muslimed the Muslims. If you want to count Muslim as Arab, we have out-Muslimed the Arabs every time. It's always been that way. It's been consistent from the very beginning. How do you know? They had to conquer Spain for it to be Muslim. They had to conquer uh, North Africa in order for it to be Muslim. That part is true. But when they started getting into in the south of the Sahara, where you're talking about the people being blurple, blue, black, purple, they couldn't conquer it. And yet it spread. It spread without conquest. This shows you that the, sub, the, the tropical Africans and the people in Malaysia and Indonesia, those Southeast tropical Asian nations that are Muslim, they have out muslim the Arabs all the time because they took it without having to be conquered in order to listen to it. They said, okay, we hear the truth. We can recognize the truth in it. It's ours. Thank you very much. Now you can keep your shop and you can keep doing business as long as you're doing it honestly. So before you start that, fuck the shuck up. I don't already told you where you can go and look to disprove all of that. But somebody taught that white Christianity wasn't even a message of Jesus. You can ask a Muslim, would tell you that ain't what Jesus was talking about. He never told people to be helpless in the face of oppression. But somebody taught that to bought them Jean's ancestors and they passed it on down. Passed it on down. So even when that boy sat up there and hugged him, who the hell taught him to do that? We even sold out. We even played. Again, multiple times. Como tal vous, monsieur? I hope this has been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.